Well, once again, welcome. It was so good to see our choir up on the screen today. If you were up there singing, it was just good to see your face. Wherever you're viewing today, just roll call, check in. Just let us know that you're doing well. Just type your name in, say whatever you need to do there, just to let us know that all is well. We go back at the end of the day, and we read all of the comments, and it just blesses our heart to know that everyone is doing well within our community. I also want to encourage you that even though we're not gathering in a building today, we are still the church. The church is wherever his people gather. So I want you to make your living room, your basement, your bedroom, wherever you're at right now, make it your personal sanctuary. And just trust and believe that everything that God could do in this house, he could also do in your house. That's right. That's I also right. want to encourage our hearts today because, again, we're practicing social distancing but how many know God has not required us to distance from him? That's right. That's so even right. though we're distancing from each other, God has inspired us to draw closer to him. And as we draw closer to him, he'll draw closer to us. That's right. And so don't be dependent on people. Don't be dependent on your church. This is your time to build your personal relationship with God and take full advantage of it. I still believe that he quieted this whole world down for us to realize that we are not in control and we are still in need of a Savior. That's right. But let's not make that our permanent dwelling place. Once these doors open back up, I want you all to rush back in here and let's get back together and get back to taking care of God's business. My wife and I, we started on last week talking about covenant rights, and it's just a message that I believe God placed on our heart to share with you all during this season. All of the notes can be found in our Linked Up Church app as well as the YouVersion Bible app. Please follow along on today because we believe it will be a tremendous blessing to you. So last week we started talking about covenant rights, and we're just going to go through a quick review, and then we'll pick right up where we left that off at from last week. We said that every covenant has three components. It has rights, it has privileges, and it has responsibilities. We defined covenant as a mutual consent or a agreement of two or more persons to do or forbear some act or thing, to grant or to promise by covenant or to bind oneself. We define rights as that which justly belongs to one according to facts or truth. And then in our introduction, we're going through eight foundational truths before we get into what your covenant rights are. Last week, we covered five of those. Number one was Jesus brings us to a new covenant, having fulfilled the old. Let us never forget he didn't come to do away with the old. He came to fulfill it. Number two, my wife and I, we talked about, uh, which is important, as the old covenant was sealed with circumcision that was outward through the flesh, the new covenant is sealed through the new birth. When we accept Jesus Christ as our personal Lord and Savior, his spirit lives on the inside of us, and we're sealed by that Holy Spirit of promise. Number three, the old covenant had a Levitical priesthood. The new covenant has Jesus as our high priest, and we are his holy priesthood. Right. Number four, the first priesthood had a temple in which dwelt uh, in the Holy of Holies and the Ark of the Covenant. And we left off talking about number five. In the new covenant, our bodies are the temple of God, and his spirit dwells on the inside of us. And today we'll pick up with point number six. Point number six. You know, I've said it before for those of you who have heard me minister before, but the old covenant is the new covenant concealed, and the new covenant is the old covenant revealed. Good. So point number six is the Levitical high priest was a earthly was an earthly mediator between Israel and Jehovah. Jesus Christ is our heavenly mediator of the new covenant. Now turn in your Bibles to Hebrews chapter 7. I'll be reading from the Passion Translation, verses 25 through 28. And it reads, So he is able to save fully from now throughout eternity everyone who comes to God through him because he lives to pray continually for them. Yeah. He is the high priest who perfectly fits our need, holy, without a trace of evil, without the ability to deceive, incapable of sin, and exalted beyond the heavens. 
Praise God. Unlike the former high priest, he is not compelled to offer daily sacrifices. They had to bring a sacrifice first for their own sins, then for the sins of the people. But he finished the sacrificial system once and for all when he offered up himself. The law appointed flawed men as high priests, but God's promise sealed with his oath. Such succeeded the law appoints the perfect son who is complete forever. See, now, understanding this, that the reason men needed a high priest and a mediator is because the natural man is is really an outlaw. Having lost his standing with God, he has no ground upon which to approach God. See, in the beginning, when we look back to Genesis, God created a heavenly being to occupy the earth. But when man fell, he became an earthly being needing access to God to heaven. And so therefore, he appointed a high priest, someone that was chosen, someone that was specific, someone that was anointed, someone, according to earthly standards, qualified. And there was a process by which he would enter into the Holy of Holies to make recompense for man's sin. And because we became earthly, these earthly beings, animal sacrifice became necessary because only blood, innocent blood, can redeem blood. The blood being the life. And so when we sacrifice, when man sacrificed in the Old Testament, that animal, that innocent blood, to recompense for man's fallen state, it was still inferior to God's intended purpose because animal was inferior to God's prized creation. So therefore, this Levitical high priest was necessary to be that intercessor between man and God. Now understand this, though, in the New Covenant, He settled that once and for all because perfection became our replacement. Yes. That's so good. And then in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 1, the Passion Translation says, Now this is the crowning point of what we are saying. We have a magnificent king and priest who ministers for us at the right hand of God. He is enthroned with honor next to the throne of the majesty on high. So they had an impure, perfect human being going on their behalf, but we have a perfect human being and a perfect sacrifice in the person of Jesus Christ interceding on our behalf. I don't know about you, family, but that comforts my heart. I believe it's impossible for me to fail with Jesus Christ praying for me and interceding for me every single day, and I am thankful for that. Point number seven, Paul described man's lost condition this way. And I don't know about you, we were all lost at one point in our lives and we all needed a savior. I don't know about you, but I was on, man, listen, I was on a pathway to hell on a rocket ship. With jet fuel. Yes, I needed (laughs) Jesus in my life. Paul describes our lost condition this way. Turn with me to Ephesians chapter 2, and I'm going to read verses 1 through 13 out of the Passion Translation. And it says, And his fullness fills you, even though you were once like corpses. We were all dead in our sins, dead in our trespasses, dead in our sins and our offenses. uh, Verse 2, It wasn't that long ago that you lived in the religion customs and values of this world, obeying the dark ruler of the earthly realm who fills the atmosphere with his authority and works diligently in the hearts of those who are obedient to the truth of God. Verse 3, the corruption that was in us from birth was expressed through the deeds and desires of ourself. Life, we lived by whatever natural cravings and thoughts our minds dictated. Living as rebellious children, subject to God's wrath like everyone else. Yes. But I love these next two words. But but God. God. Somebody ought to just stop right there for a minute, right in your living room, right at the dining room table, right in your bed, and just lift up your hands and thank God that you had a but God moment. Praise God. But God still loved us. With such a great love. love. See, while we were yet sinners, he still loved us with such a great love. And he is so rich in compassion and mercy. Even when we were dead and doomed in our sins, 
He united us into the very life of Christ and saved us by his wonderful grace. I love what the King James Version says. He saved us to the uttermost. Yes. Folks, yes. I want you to understand that when Christ does something, he never does it halfway. That's right. If he does it and he starts it, then he is well able to finish it. Yes. I can think back 30 years ago, man, when I was just lost all I thought about was going to clubs. All I thought about was girls. All I thought about was drinking. But man, at the age of 22, and I'm talking to somebody right now that's listening, I gave my life to Christ. Yes. And Christ saved me by his wonderful grace, and he saved me to the uttermost, where girls just, they ran my life. I'm so happy to tell you that I've been saved 30 years now. And this is the only woman that I've known for the last 30 years of my life. Amen. Christ, he can do more than folks just give you heaven. He can give you heaven yes, right down yes, here on earth yes. if you will allow him to. He has not lost his power, not one ounce of it. He can deliver you from addiction. He can deliver you from drugs. He can deliver you from the opposite sex, same sex. I don't care what you're going through right now. His power is available to save you to the uttermost. That's and right. somebody ought to thank God. If I have any witnesses out there right now that knows about the saving power of Jesus Christ, yes. would you just give him glory? Would you give him yes. honor? Would you thank Hallelujah. him for his wonderful grace today? I don't even want to think about where I might be. If it was not for your saving grace yes. that saved yes. me. Thank you for that, Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Verse 6 says, He raised us up with Christ, the exalted one, and we ascended with him into the glorious perfection and authority of the heavenly realm. And we are now co-seated as one yes. with Christ Jesus. I love it. To all my young people that are watching right now, we started at the bottom, now we're here. And somebody ought to thank God that he raised us up to the highest level. Right. You are not who you used to be. He raised you up and gave you a co-seat alongside Jesus Christ. Folks, we are better than the life that we are living right now. And Christ wants us to walk in the fullness of all that he has provided for us. Verse 7 says, throughout the coming ages, we will be the visible display of the infinite, limitless riches of his grace grace Woo! and kindness, which yes. was showered upon us in Christ Jesus. He desires for us to be the visible display of who he is in the earth. That's Folks, right. when people see you, they need to understand what Jesus is like. When people see you come to work, that should be the visible image and expression of what Jesus is like. Folks, we are to be shining lights in a lost and dying world. We are the answer to the world. The church still is is the hope to the world, and we have all the answers in Christ. Verse 8 says, For it was only through this wonderful grace that we believed in him. Nothing we did could ever earn this salvation. For it was the gracious gift from God that brought us to Christ. Folks, I'm just thankful today. Yes. Can we just thank God one more yes. time thank you, Father, for the gracious for gift of us. his Son, Jesus Give Christ? He not only gave him on that cross, but he also in his resurrection redeemed our lives. So no one will ever be able to boast, verse 9, for salvation is never a reward for good works or human striving. We have become his poetry, his recreated people that will fulfill the destiny he has given each of us. Good news. For we are joined to Jesus, the anointed one, even before we were born, God planned in advance our destiny and the good works that we would do to fulfill it. If you're not saved today, I want you to understand that Christ died to give you the life and he rose to give you the life that you always dreamed of. That's right. He prearranged a good life for you to live. And the more you cooperate with Christ and the more you cooperate with God, the more of that good life you get to live. I wouldn't live one more day outside of Christ. I wouldn't live one more day outside of the will of God. I would make this Resurrection Sunday my birthday 
the day that I decided to get on the good path that he That's provided right. for right. me before the right. foundation of this world. I don't care how much you've messed up in the past. I don't care what you've done wrong. wrong. It's all washed under the blood. And today can be a fresh start and a new beginning for you That's so that right. you can begin living the good life that he prearranged for you. Verse 11 and 12. So don't forget that you were not born as a Jew and were uncircumcised. Circumcision itself is just a work of man's hands, as we've been talking about. You had none of the Jewish covenants and laws. You were foreigners to Israel's incredible heritage. You were, th you were without the covenants and the prophetic promises of the Messiah, the promised hope and without God. Yet look at you now. See, some of you all sitting in your beautiful homes, your beautiful apartments. You didn't get there by yourself. That's right. That's I said, right. you didn't get there by yourself. Come on, don't sit there and act like it's your education. Come on, don't sit there and act like it's because of who you are. No, if it was not for the grace of God, you would right. not be where you are right now. It's not by might, it's not by power, but it's by my spirit, says God. Right. Everything that we have has come from God. Every good and perfect gift comes from above, and you ought to thank God for it. You ought to give God glory for it because he's been good for us. Look at us now. Look at what he's done for us. Everything is new. Although we were once distant and far away from God, now we have been brought delightfully close to him through the sacred blood of Jesus. You have actually been united to Christ. And That's again, good. I am good. thankful for that today. You know, it's listening to that. What's beautiful about that, honey, is that you know, God acknowledges through his scripture that we pre-existed our birth here on the earth mm -hmm. and we will post-exist. And so although eternity is the absolute prize, just to think that he th still thought it necessary to come to earth yeah. to just graduate us onto this hope, to this faith and to this vision is astounding and didn't to understand that God in his infinite wisdom and his supreme authority created mankind so whereby we could not exist without being connected to the source, right? That's right. We're dysfunctional without being connected to the source, just like, just like a Tesla car is dysfunctional when it's not connected to the charging system. Mm -hmm. He made sure that we still had ways to access him so that we're infused with the power yep that he made available to us from the very beginning. So as long as we abide in him and he abides in us, we can ask for whatever we will and he's going to give it to us. Folks, he didn't just save you for you to get to heaven. He saved you so that you can have heaven right down here on earth. That's right. That's right. That's good. That's good news. Now, number eight, he is, Christ is our mediator. Now, I left off talking about graduating the Old Testament into the New Testament, the Old Covenant into the New Covenant. But let's talk about Christ, who is our mediator. Hebrews chapter 9, verse 23 through 28 in the Passion, it says, And so it was necessary for all the earthly symbols of the heavenly realities to be purified with these animals. But the heavenly things themselves required a superior sacrifice than these. He called us heavenly things. He says that we heavenly images, who, us who were made in his divine image, we needed a more superior sacrifice. For the Messiah did not enter into the earthly tabernacle made by men, which was but an echo of the true sanctuary, but he entered into heaven itself to appear before the face of God in our place. Under the old system, year after year, the high priest entered the most holy sanctuary with blood that was not his own, but the Messiah did not need to repeatedly offer himself up year after year, for that would mean we must, he must suffer repeatedly ever since the fall of the world. But now, he has appeared at the fulfillment of the ages to abolish sin once and for all by the sacrifice of himself. See, understand that Jesus took on the punishment of sin. Right. Jesus took on the, 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 the power of sin, but he didn't remove from us sin. See, we still have choice. And his intended deliverance, his intended salvation, his intention for us is to live a life loving him, yeah. trusting him, yeah. pleasing him, yeah. whereby sin is not even an option anymore. That's right. 
And when sin isn't an option, you can't help but to walk in his promises. That's right. You can't help but to want to please him. That's right. You can't help but to understand that the mediator, Jesus Christ, what he did for you was so awesome and so great that you're compelled to want to treat that right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Want to. Because it was so powerful that he didn't have to do it over and over again. Because he was perfection yeah. being made offered for us. He was innocence being made recompense for us. He was that peace that entered into us that delivered us from evil and temptation and sin. Yes. It says here in verse 27, every human being is appointed to die once and then to face God's judgment. But when we die, we will be face to face with Christ the one who experienced death once and for all to bear the sins of many. See, when he says there that we are, that we are appointed once to die, that's when we lay down this flesh of sin. Because our spirit, being made in the image of God, wants to do right. It, it's that convicting standard that wants us and compels us for a Savior, for a salvation. Then it goes on to say, And now to those who eagerly await him, he will appear a second time, not to deal with sin, but to bring us the fullness of salvation. Christ came and offered himself as a sacrifice for our sins. He put away, remitted, and blotted out our sins and became the mediator between God and man. See, Jesus took away the power of sin and the punishment of sin rightfully, uh, that rightfully goes with sin. He didn't take, take away the choice of sin or the consequences of it, as I said earlier. And I'm reminded of something that was going on yesterday. You know, a lot of us are preparing that resurrection, that Easter dinner on today. And, you know, ordinarily we would have family, but for many of us it's relegated to just those that are in our household. And we're doing the same thing. And so I, I got this nice, you know, beef thing that I'm, gonna, that I'm supposed to marinate. And I was going to marinate it yesterday. And, you know, I got some cooking wine because part of the marinade is this cooking, cooking wine, cooking wine. And I went to make my marinade and I, you know, we don't, we drink nothing. My strong drink is Coca-Cola. And so I go to open up this cooking wine and for, in this one, they, cor they corked it. And how about, even though the wine is there, it's there, all the ingredients are there, set out. The meat is there, everything. Because I didn't have a cork opener, how many of you know that the ingredients are still sitting on my countertop? <laughs> and I'm going to have to stop sometime between, and we're just going to do our grilling on tomorrow. But my, that cork, that, that, that wine opener, that cork unsealer is my mediator to get me to what I need to finish this recipe. That's good. That's good. Jesus, even though that was a very simple and practical, it's important to me that I make my dinner right, you understand? But it's a practical example of who Jesus is in our life. Yeah. We have a part within us that no one can satisfy. Right. Nothing can satisfy. Right. Addictions are, are, people become addicted because they're trying to fill a hole that only was meant for the Holy Spirit, right. for God himself. Right. It, it, a lot of times we find ourselves in situations of desperation because we're trying to solve a problem because of this earthly fallen state, but we can't solve a heavenly issue because we were made from ev heavenly uh, ingredients. So therefore, Jesus, who's the filler of that hole, who is the key to that lock, is the one who now, who is the, 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 cork, the cork remover of that wine bottle. He's the one that brings us back to our source. Yeah. So that now we have this connection. Yeah. And not only do we have this connection, but we have eternal access that pre-existed us, but that lasts with us for eternity. Timothy chapter 2, verse 5. In the Passion, it says, For God is one, and there is one mediator between God and the sons of men, the true man, Jesus, the appointed one. 2 Corinthians chapter 5, verse 21, in the Passion Translation, says, For God made the only one who did not know sin to become sin for us. He's covered it. He's, in fact, no, he didn't cover it. I'm sorry. I misspoke. He washed it. Yeah, he removed it. Bleach, Purell, sanitization, Lysol, ain't got nothing on the blood of Jesus. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. 
And it says, so that we who did not know righteousness might become the righteousness of God through our union with him. God, Jesus settled sin, the sin issue, once and for all because he gave by way of giving us a covenant that was ratified by his blood and his broken body, the legal right to an eternal life that, and, the, and all the promises that go with it. So yes, we have access to heaven, but we can have heaven on earth. We are heavenly, we are spiritual beings having an earthly experience. No longer are we earthly beings seeking a heavenly experience. That's so good. So while the world, as we close right here, so while the world is looking for a vaccine to combat the COVID-19 virus, I want you to know that God created a vaccine over 2,000 years ago. Yes. And it's called the blood of Jesus. And it has not lost its power. If they never come up with a vaccine for it, I believe that his, his blood will keep me healed, delivered, and made whole all the days of my life. We're going to prepare our hearts for Holy Communion today, and we're going to take it in the spirit of that. But before we get to Holy Communion, I want you to get all of your elements together. I want to take my time with the communion today because I believe it represents what's going on in our earth and the victory that Christ has provided for us over that. But I want you to look at me for a moment right there where you're sitting, right in your living room, right in your basement, right at your kitchen table, wherever you're watching from right now wherever you're listening from right now. I want you to think about the awesome price that was paid for you to walk in victory. I want you to think about a good life that has already been prearranged for you. Why are you struggling? Why are you going through what you're going through when you don't have to? I'm not telling you that if you give your life to Christ today, everything is going to change. But what I am telling you is that you, if you give your life to Christ today, the process of everything changing will begin. And ultimately, you'll see yourself living the good life that he prearranged for you. So I want to give three invitations today. If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your personal Lord and Savior, what a great gift to give yourself on this Resurrection Sunday. Yes, yes. I want to lead you in a prayer here in a moment. It doesn't really matter what's going on, where you're at. The people you're watching this with right now, they love you. That's why they invited you to watch this with them. And they're going to pray this prayer with you and surround you and comfort you today. Secondarily, you might say, Pastor, I'm already saved, but I've gotten away from Christ. I, I just went back out into the world, and I know I'm living a life today that he is not pleased with. He might not be pleased with it, but he never stopped loving you. That's right. And I came to tell you today that his grace is sufficient for you. Right. And while you're yet in your current situation, he still loves you, he still died, and he still rose. All you need to do is repent and come back to him today. If that's you, I want to lead you in a prayer here in a moment. And then finally, if you don't have a church home, you can join Linked Up Church virtually today. We have our Connect To class that we're going to offer via Zoom right after these services are over today. And it'll really bless your life. We had 25 people last week take Next Steps 1. Yes. You can take Next Steps 2 today. We'll show, talk to you about how to do that if you want to make Linked Up Church your church home. And so if you want to pray this prayer with me today, I just want you to put your hand over your heart, and I want you to repeat these words after me. I want you to say, Dear Heavenly Father, Heavenly Father I, believe I believe that Jesus Christ, that Jesus Christ is, the Son of God. is the Son of God. I believe, I believe that, he died, that He died, rose from the grave, from the grave and He is alive right now. Alive right Lord now. Jesus, Come into, my heart Come into my heart and save me now. Save me now. As, a As a result of what I confess with my mouth, I with what I believe in my heart, I, in my heart. I, am, right now I am right now born again, born again. And, in and in right standing with God. And all my sins, all my sins are, forgiven are forgiven in Jesus' name. Jesus name. Why don't somebody just put the praise hands in there right now? Just say amen. Just praise God, worship God right where you're at right now. Father, Give him the glory that is due unto his name. Thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you for souls coming into your kingdom. Thank you for people coming back to Christ virtually today, Father, and however they're listening. Thank you over the airwaves. People pray that, that prayer sincerely from their hearts. And you're meeting them right where, they're out, where they are, and you're supernaturally changing their lives. 
If you prayed that prayer today sincerely from your heart, there's some information right there on your screen. If you would, just click on that button and then check off whether or not you've committed your life to Christ. If you're renewing your life to Christ, whatever decision you made, just check the box that applies to you and a minister will follow up with you within two to three business days. Hello, family. Thank you for joining our online service today. I want to invite you to become a part of our online community by subscribing to our YouTube channel. Download the Linked Up Church app. Visit our website to find out everything that's going on here at Linked Up Church. If you desire to help us reach more people just like you, you can do so by clicking the Give button now. This will allow us to connect more people to God, to family, to purpose, and community. Thanks again for watching our service on today. We were so excited to have you and see you next time.